Today on the YouTube channel, we're going to be taking this 10 mile per gallon monster and maybe, maybe getting 15 miles a gallon on the highway. The carburetor on this is an 850 Holley carburetor. It's a double pumper. The engine size is a 7.4 liter or 454. And uh, it drinks gas. And right now, with gas being the price it is, I'll take all I can get. So today I'm going to be replacing the main jets in this and showing you how you can get a little bit better gas mileage out of your Holley carburetor. We're going to be replacing a couple of things today. In addition to the main jets, we're also gonna be replacing the metering block because the metering block on there does not have a vacuum spark advance port. And uh, I would like to be able to use that because I have a little bit more timing than I want initially. And uh, I just want to be as, as avoid detonation as much as I possibly can so I can continue to run the 87. So we're going to be installing this as well as changing the jets that are in there, which I believe are 86s. And I'll be able to confirm that when we get it out. So now let me show you exactly how we're going to do that. First things first. You're gonna to want to go ahead and if you have an electronic fuel pump, shut the fuel pump off and run the carburetor out of gas. On mine, I have glass sight bowls or glass sights in the carburetor so you can actually see that there's no gas in it. You don't have to undo a plug, which is very convenient. After that, you're going to be able to leave your fuel inlet hooked up and all you have to do is remove one, let's see if we can get it in there, one, two, three, and four, right there, bolts. And then that entire, what this is referred to as the bowl, the entire bowl will come off of the carburetor and you'll be able to get to this black part, the metering block. And if you're wondering about this, it comes with the carburetor, but you have to poke your own hole. That just keeps everything out of it and make sure that it stays as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and then I'm gonna go set this over here on the table to show everybody how exactly to make the changes. So as you can see, I'm now going to go ahead and remove the four bolts that go through the bowl and the metering block and into the body of the carburetor. And then I'm going to remove the metering block. So now I have moved the metering block out of the way. That is what it looks like underneath there. Here is the metering block. As you can see, we have the uh, extension here for sharp angles, the two main jets, as well as the uh, power valve right here. So we're going to remove all of this and transfer it over here along with some different size jets. Okay, so here's what we've changed. I do not have the piece that goes in here, like this one. So we had a four and a half uh, valve here, and now we've got a six and a half. So that means that this is going to open a little bit sooner, which is good because the cam I have isn't big enough that I require something quite this extreme. So we also went down, we've got 82s in here. We're gonna see what that does. We're gonna go install this now and hope for the best. So at this point, now it's just a matter of reinstalling the metering block and repositioning the bowl of the carburetor, then putting the four bolts through the bowl and the metering block to reinstall both of them. After that, I'm then going to close all of the idle air screws completely. And after doing that, I'm then going to back them out half a turn and start the truck. At that point, I'm going to use the air fuel ratio gauge I have in the cab, and I'm going to reference uh, between the air fuel ratio gauge and the vacuum gauge and decide what the best point for the idle, the four corner idle air control screws is going to be. Once I've determined that, I'm then going to install a vacuum tube between the distributor and the metering block check for timing, and then adjust the timing to what I want it to be, which ended up being about uh, a total of 30 degrees with an initial 
of eight degrees of timing uh, in order to keep it conservative and make sure that I'm able to run the 87. You'll see when I start it, you'll probably notice it on the fuel gauge <laughs> rather than the belts because of the sped up footage. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to drive this for about a week and then film an outro and let everyone know how it's running. All right, so after a week of driving this truck, after changing the jets and the carburetor and sort of fiddling with them, I ended up settling on a set of 80s in the primary and I went ahead and changed both power valves from fours to the 6.6 and a half so they originally had like I think four and a half in them and now they have six and a half changed both of those and uh, with running the 80s in the front in the primaries I am getting about a uh, 13 and a half to one AFR which I could go a little bit a little bit more but I kind of like the safety of it because sometimes it it swings it's a carburetor, so it's not the most precision instrument. And I'm also not the best carburetor tuner in the world, but I am getting about 14 miles to the gallon uh, highway, strictly highway. Uh, I have seen 15, but that was literally from one gas station on the highway to the next gas station on the highway. No city driving. Whenever you do combined, I'm getting roughly 10 to 12, which before combined city and highway driving, I was getting like eight to five so I've also I have been staying out of it a little bit uh, I did do a burnout and it still didn't seem to affect the fuel mileage much used to I would do that and the gas gauge would quickly go that way you could literally watch it move it's a little bit more fuel efficient now it's much happier wide open happier pretty much everywhere so I'm very glad I tuned it and like I said we're getting a lot better gas mileage especially when you consider uh, that that is a 7.4 liter big block Chevy so I'm very happy with that uh, drivability has been fantastic and if you have a carburetor I highly suggest you make some modifications to it in order to make the car run smoother it's a lot easier on your pocketbook and the parts are not expensive it really wasn't the jets are like a few dollars <laughs> like it's not that much and you just have to have a couple of gaskets maybe some power valves if depending on what you have so Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, if you watch next time, you're going to see me working on a 98 OBS and spending an obscene amount of money on it. You may ask, why would I spend an obscene amount of money on an OBS that's not going to get much better or actually might even get worse gas mileage than this? Well, it's because I make wonderful and fantastic financial decisions, and if you want to learn more about how to make financial decisions like me, watch the next video. It'll be a good one. Thank you. Have a great day.